The Earth System, a video series for educational institutions for free use presented by the German Geological Society, the DGGV. Hello everyone, I welcome the viewers of another episode of my video series on the Earth System. In this video I would like to discuss convection currents in the Earth's mantle and as with all other videos, I would like to point out the opportunity, giving me feedback if you have any questions or comments. You'll find my email address on the first page of this video or on the website. Convection or convection current is a physical principle that has a lot to do with isostatic compensation, which I already talked about in some earlier videos on isostasy. When materials, whether solid, liquid or gases, are heated, the so-called Brownian molecular motion increases in them. This means that the individual molecules move faster and need a little more space. This causes the mass to expand slightly and, of course, become lighter. The result is that it rises upwards according to the principle of isostatic compensation. This phenomenon can be observed in many places. For example, we all know that warm air rises and cold air falls down. It can also be demonstrated in a very simple experiment. If you heat water in a pot at one point, for example with a Bunsen burner, as shown in the figure here, heat is supplied by the flame and the heating causes the water to rise at this point become, because it becomes lighter. It cools on the surface and sinks back down the sides of the pot. This creates a circular flow called convection. The water moves in a convection current. Such convection currents can also be found in the Earth's mantle and most probably also in the Earth's core. The Earth's mantle is not liquid like water, but it is mobile, except that the movements there occur at extremely low speeds. We measure it in centimeters per year, not centimeters per second like in our water model. Centimeters per year, that is the velocity dimension that we know from plate movements. And so the Earth's mantle is able to flow over periods of time that ultimately spun uh, millions of years. Well, in the now generally accepted plate tectonic model of our Earth, convection currents play an important role for plate movements. Even in the first uh, models from the 1916s and 1970s, convection currents in the Earth's mantle were depicted as the main drivers of plate motion. And it has remained that way to this day. However, uh, lots of illustrations of convection currents in the Earth's mantle that you can find in countless variations on the internet or in textbook books are unfortunately not really correct such as this example from uh, Wikipedia, which can be found under the keyword mantle convection. All of these representations have in common that they show the convection currents in the Earth's mantle as huge convection cells that go through the entire mantle and bring the hot material back up again just below the spreading zone. And as I said already, you will find many, many similar representations in modern textbooks or in video clips, some of them even animated. Okay, they are not correct, but what's the problem? In this model, cool lithosphere thinks downward in subduction zones and the hot mantle flows are supposed to rise just below a spreading zone. This is understandable so far. It corresponds to the water model for convection currents and it certainly explains how plate tectonic works. But this idea is unfortunately wrong because it doesn't work. If convection in the Earth's mantle really happened like it does here in the Wikipedia illustration, then the convection cells should not change their location. They would always have to stay in the same place. But we know that oceans are constantly changed their shape, first becoming ever wider and then gradually disappearing by being completely subducted. In this model, however, the closure of an ocean would not be possible at all. What would then happen to the convection cells when the ocean disappears? Or let's look at the Atlantic which doesn't fit into this model at all because there are no subduction zones at the edges apart from very small ones in the Caribbean and South Georgia. Neither on the American, European or African side we can find subduction zones. 
but in the middle between the two plates is a spreading zone that has been active for millions of years. So, in short, that's not how it works. In the next figures, I would like to show how convection beneath the spreading zone is interpreted today in the overall context of mantle flow. The spreading zones simply do not have the importance for the mantle flow as previously assumed. There is convection under the spreading centers, but local convection cells are forming that are located directly under the rift where the oceanic crust is formed. As we know, hot mantle currents come up there, as I showed in the previous video about the formation of the oceanic crust. But the related convection cells are small, locally limited and do not extend into the depths. I have drawn that very schematically in this figure. The large scale, truly global mantle flow is only found in deeper areas in, uh, in the mantle. To understand how convection works in the Earth's body, we need to look at mantle currents in a global context. Mantle flows are very large scale and I would avoid the term convection cells that is sometimes used. It is a current that runs somewhat diffusely through the Earth's mantle. Here in this figure you can see also that the currents do exactly what convection means. They contribute to the exchange of cold and warm masses. And in this model too, cool lithosphere descends into the mantle and subduction zones. But, and this is the main difference, the currents do not rise under the spreading zones, but rather widely distributed in rising hotspots. Hotspots are not statistically distributed ac across the Earth's body, as you can see on this map. There are two clusters, one around Africa and the Eastern Atlantic and another in Central and Eastern Pacific. And that in turn is related to the Earth's large heat exchange system. And this is nothing else than a system of convection currents. This is a cross section through the Earth's body. Here we see a section parallel to the equator, so we are essentially looking from, at this from the South Pole. This is a model of the Earth's body based on the latest scientific findings and here I will just show how the currents flow in the Earth's mantle. In a later video I will explain more on this figure. For instance, the meaning of the zones shown here, such as the Tuzo and Jason bulges and the subduction zones. You can roughly divide the Earth body into four areas, each with opposite areas of subduction and areas at approximately right angles to them in which hotspots occur. And there are actually more of them than you might initially think. It is estimated that there are currently around 40 to 50 such hotspots worldwide. Most people will know the hotspots of Hawaii or Yellowstone, perhaps also the Campi Flegrei near Naples in Italy or the Canary Islands with the recently erupted volcano on La Palma, but there is much more. As we would expect according to this model, the two phenomena, subduction and hotspot, do not occur together, sometimes in relative proximity, but not together. So a hotspot would never lie directly in a subduction zone. In contrast, there are spreading zones with a hotspot underneath. Iceland is the best example of this. There is a hotspot directly under the mid-Atlantic ridge. The hotspot lifted the oceanic crust so that the ridge with the spreading zone can be observed on land today. This is one of the very few places on Earth where this is possible. Normally, the spreading zones on the mid oceanic ridges are at water depth of over 2,000 meters. Okay, so much for the convection currents. We will look further into spreading zones, including in the next videos. This time, thank you for listening, and I'll be happy if you stick around. And I recommend continuing with the video on spreading zones and plate motion.